Hey everybody and welcome back to another video. So before we get started today, you're going to need to go ahead and download uh, these images over here. So you need to download the flying slime and you will also need to uh, download this, what's called the golden UI, which we will be using in the future here. So I'll just download these real quick. Okay, just save it, save it. And great. Then once you have it downloaded, what you can do is just drag it in like we drag in anything else. So I just have mine on the home screen. So in order to uh, drag these in, we're first going to create folders inside this sprites folder here. So let's just call this uh, golden UI and wait for it to save. And then we're also going to make one for the uh, slime images that we downloaded from itch.io so we can make those two folders. So let's open up the golden UI and then drag that one in. And then we can go back and then take these two and then drag those in. And once you have those in there, you can just delete those from the home screen since they're copied over into the file structure here. And then we can st start working with them. So what we can do for uh, the slime images is first of all, rename them. So uh, we can just rename it to slime attack and then slime idle since we don't really need the fact that they're flying in there. And then we can drag them both or first before we drag them actually what we need to do is we need to go here and make sure they're set to point no filter and uh, go to multiple and then inside the sprite editor we have to do what we've done many times before and just make this into uh, cell counts which there's one two three four five six seven eight nine so that means we need nine columns here and then click apply and perfect and then we can do the same thing for the slime idle here. Change it to point no filter. Click apply. Oh, and make sure this is multiple. And then once we reopen it, we can slice it into four different uh, individual images and then click apply right there. Okay, awesome. So I'm just gonna click save and then I'll zoom into this corner area right here and then we can create just the slime attack animation. And then same thing for slime idle. Okay. Slime idle. Perfect. So the reason that we're going to need these is because once we're in the battle scene, we want a more zoomed in and sort of detailed image of the slime instead of just using this same slime. So we can continue on working with that now. Okay, and real quick, we can do a few housekeeping things. So the first one is we can change the size of the gizmos here to make them a little bit smaller so it doesn't cover up the whole character right here, for example. And another thing that we can do is we can go into the main camera and make sure that the tag is set to main camera here, which is perfect. And we can go into scenes and go into the battle view and find the main camera. And first of all, we can switch the size of the camera to one, which will make it match the other camera in the other scene. And then we don't want this to be main camera actually. We want to add a new type of camera and we want to call this the battle view camera because we don't want this camera to be considered the same thing as the other camera. So then we can just click right here and change that and also make sure that is saved. Awesome. So we can zoom out to find the full image or the full canvas again right here. And what we're going to actually want to do is change the camera's or the canvas's style. So right now it's set to screen space overlay, but we can change it to something different here too. So what we want to do is we want to change it to screen space camera. And then we want to set the camera to this main camera, which is the battle view camera. So now 
This will be a little bit easier to work with since it'll match with the camera now. All right, so our next step for this is to change the sorting layer into a UI sorting layer because we want all of these things to sort of be on top and be in their own layer. So you have your Z position to determine the layer, but you also have the sorting layer to determine it as well. And we're going to want to work with that a little bit here in a minute. So what we can go ahead and do is go find the slime image that we were working with before. And let's insert the slime attack image here. And uh, I'm not sure why it's making me do a new animation, but what we should be able to do is insert this and just overwrite the slime attack. And then we can increase the size here. So we can set the scale to three and three, or maybe six and six would look nice. And then if we put this right here, it should look pretty nice. And what we want to do here is change the update mode from normal to unscaled time. Because the whole point is that when we go to the battle view, the rest of the game is actually paused. And we want things in the battle view to still animate. And the animator is only going to work if we go to unscaled time. Because for normal time, we set the time to zero. So we don't want that. All right. Now what we also want to do is we want to change the layer of this object to the UI because this is not a normal game object. This is just an object that's showing up in the UI. And then what we can do is we can set the order in the layer to something like 100. So the higher the number, the more in front it will appear. Awesome. Now we can go to the blur panel and also make sure the layer is set to UI. And then we can just uh, search for a little bit and see and make sure that the layer is correct. Okay, I think everything's correct though, so we can just try it out real quick. Let's go back to the scenes and back to Forest 1 and find our hero, which we're going to want to go and edit this script a little bit more because we want to make it so when we switch into the other view a few different things should happen. All right, let me just get set up here and see what we need to change. So right now, when we load up the scene, we're just setting the blur panel, but we're going to need to do some changes with the cameras as well. So what we want to do is we want to type in game object main camera and find the uh, main camera actually. So you just do game object find a game object with tag and then the main camera tag. All right, awesome. Then what we can do is we can just set this uh, camera to no longer be active. So you just do set camera or set active equal to false. And I did find game objects. It should just be find game object with tag. And we want to do the same exact thing. So we can just copy and paste this code and we want to find the uh, battle view camera. So we can change this to the uh, battle view camera right here. And then we can set active to true. So we want this to be the camera that's actually uh, in charge now. All right. And then the last thing that we have to do, and probably the most important, is that we need this camera's location to be the same as the main camera. So the way that we can do that is we can do battle view camera dot transform and then set the position and rotation. And we just want its position and rotation to be the same as the main camera. So it's just main camera dot transform dot uh, position. And then we also can do the same thing for its rotation actually. And since this game is 2D, it doesn't really matter too much. But if it was 3D, we would maybe want to do some effects. So that's why it still has this rotation on here. All right, perfect. So we made all of those changes. Let's test it to see if it works. Okay. 
Okay, so let's run over to this guy, run into him, and we can see that we now have this showing up, but our button isn't showing up and the blurring effect isn't working anymore. So let's go ahead and fix that. Okay, one thing that we need to change real quick is we need to make sure the canvas sorting layer is actually set to UI right here. And then we can go ahead and try it again to see if it works. All right, so let's go back to the main scene and then click play. Okay, so you can see that fixed it. The canvas was just on the wrong layer and we now have the leave button, but now you can see that uh, the slime is in the background now. So the blur effect is occurring on the slime as well, which is what we don't want. So you can see how you fix one thing, but you break another thing. So let's fix that too. So I really thought we fixed it, but the sorting layer was set to default instead of UI. Maybe that just got changed when we were going through everything, but either way, I just changed it back to UI and the order in the layer is a pretty high number. So that should be good to try out again. Okay, so we finally have everything working here. So I will also turn up the uh, blur effect just to make it even more obvious. So we can increase the multiplier right here to the maximum. And you can see that uh, everything in the battle view right here is not blurry, whereas everything in this forest view is blurry. Even though the blur panel is inside the scene view, it's just all the way at the bottom of the scene view, which is really perfect and great. And you can actually yeah, so just change these values however you want. We'll play with that a little bit more in the future. But yeah, thank you so much for watching, and we will continue working on this in the next episode.